Hello everyone, we are going to try to go a little more in depth into the WAN 2.1 vase. We did some simple motions previously with a control net or mask editing V2V. And I want to try out more complex motions. For example, we are seeing right now the video demo in here. One of the videos that I generated previously using a character. The start frame is the image of this. And I generated this person running, and then also many different complex motions of a human character that can be done, such as, in this part, it can turn around 360 degrees and then come back and keep running. Because this is a story of this hacker being chased by people in the science lab. So there are some motions like this. And also, at the end, we have the person turning their head, looking backward, where we were experiencing some difficulties, when using control net for controlling those animations. Now coming back to the vase. Previously I showed these workflows, how to do this using the V2V method and using the control pre-processing, such as we can use the depth map and also we can use something like DW pose, like this one. So by doing that, we can usually, for a basic one vase control net, V2V processing, use one vase encode node in here where we are going to receive the preprocessor's preprocessing depth, anything, or you have open pose or DW pose images as the input frames here. And of course, we need the reference image. In this part, I am using my other image that is going to be this female lookalike face robot. We are going to use this more futuristic style and the background as well to replace what I had previously generated in videos. So these videos are pretty perfect in here for the human character's motions. As you can see, turn around and then keep running, the head can look back to the hallways. All those motions are pretty natural. And go to here as we can use the V to V and make more futuristic styles with this character. And by using that in here, of course, we need the reference image. And if I'm using just one preprocessing, so in this case, I have disabled the second vase preprocessor. And here, you will see that it's only using one depth anything image preprocessing for the control net. And most of the scenarios, if you have simple motions where you have a character just walking in one direction, it's fine to use just one depth anything or one open pose preprocessor. But if you have some like these complex motions, like this turnaround 360 degrees, and the result in here that I've generated, it's not looking good, as you can see right here. Let's zoom into full page. So come to here in the middle when the character is actually doing a 360 degree spinning and looks back to the hallways and then turns back to the front view of the camera and keeps running. By using one control net preprocessing generate result, you won't be able to get those motions captured in a really good way. As you can see, it is just from here, in the after the first seconds of this video clip, it just gets stuck here for a moment and then keeps running. So that is well for beginners or an easier way to do this. Okay, but see, that is not kind of smooth. If you want to have really good quality of capturing the motions and restyle that, or we call that the style transfer to this more futuristic robot. If we want to do fully 360 degrees, we need one more help of the control net, which I have used in here. So in the second vase, in the video face encoder, I am going to use another one, which is the DW pose, or you can use open pose, whichever you prefer. And this way we can even capture more motions of the character how that 360 degrees turn around and keep running. By doing that, it will be more accurate to capture the motions of how the character in my previous Generate AI videos here has that woman turning around and able to capture these motions and bring it to my new Generate videos. And so once I connect this one, you can think of it like the control net custom nodes that we usually have played around with in Animated Diff. You are basically using a preprocessor connecting to the input frames and refer image, the reference image here, the same image that I'm using for the robotic character, and we set that to connect the previous vase embed. This is a really fun thing to play around with because we can connect multiple vase encodes in here. So we connect the first one, the vase embed, but the output of this is not going to directly pass to the sampler. What we are going to use is that we are getting the vase result setting in here and connect to the second vase encode. From the second vase encode output, we send it to the sampler. 
So as you can see, I have the set node in here where we will be receiving the set node in the sampler groups right here. So once we have this connected, this is like a pipeline starting from the death anything v2 preprocessor to the first vase encode, and then the second one is the DW pose. And we have the second vase encode here to do the processing. So before that, let's turn off the sampling and we run one more time to gather the control net preprocessing image. So come back to here as we have generated the DW pose in here, like that. As you can see, it's able to control more accuracy of the human character pose using DW pose. So you have to understand how to use and what kind of image preprocessors control net preprocessors. You need to apply them in the right way, in the right situations to do that as well. So we have both generated and after that we generate the sampling as well, as I have also done that already. And as you can see, we have the generate result here. So the turnaround image of the character, as we put that all side by side comparison, you will see the difference that we have with the same motions of the character that we have from the source video. And then we can do that as well in the new generated video as well. Compared with what we have with the first try of video generations here, we got the robot kind of stuck on the middle in this. After the first seconds, it's like this. It doesn't know what to do for turning around or what, but just a little bit far of the distance. But in here, it can completely show why the character stayed back a little bit. And because of that turning around movement that is fully completed for how it looks, as you can see, is more smooth for the robotic character. Turn around and running back, keep moving forward like this. And it does help a lot by using more than one vase on code, or you can, you know, it's kind of flexible for the one vase because you are not only limited to just using control net in this case. So for example, if you have control net for controlling the emotions and maybe further of this workflow, or you want to customize for your own workflow, you can also use a third vase and code with another group that is doing for the input mask, which you can only segmenting. Like for example, in here, I want to just segment the character to become this robotic character and then remain the backgrounds as what it is of the source video. And the concept is really similar to what we have in Animative V2V. Previously, we used the advanced control net node to, you know, making the control net preprocessor's image for our character pose or any object's pose as well. In WAN 2.1 vase, the same concept. We're using this vase on code, and the vase framework are very flexible. Using these three combinations, all we need is the input frame, reference image, and input mask. These three combinations can make up of like nine kinds of conditions in here already that we can play around with. So far I have tried, maybe later, even more conditions we can use with different combinations from these three input parameters. And by what I'm talking about with also the masking for mass edit we usually use. You know, previously, I have shown how to use by just masking the video specific objects of that. Like here, I mask the character this time and use this as the output of the video. What we usually see by the output of that is the masking area of this source video. And this way, we can only focus on the changes of this area, which is in this case, the character. When we have this masking as one of the vase and coat well, we can call this as a condition. Passing this condition included in this sampling settings, we will have two control net preprocessor images that are going to handle our character motions and the actions how that move. And then we have the mask here to tell the AI which area are we going to use our restyle image to mask that area. So in this case, we are only masking or restyling the area that is in the middle here, the character region here. So to turn out the result is going to look like this. We have only masked the character which turned into this futuristic robotic character. As you can see in here, Let's put that side by side so you guys can check it out how that looks like. So coming to this side. As you can see here, we have the source video and then we have the restyle image, how I want the character to look like. And it turns out that we have the character doing that style transfer into the robotic character of from my image. And in here, this is going to do a better way for the character, how the more complex motions like this can be handled and also only style transfer the specific objects or the character in the video. As you can see all the backgrounds, the hallways, this science lab, 
It is the same as what we have in the source video. Of course, this source video is 10 seconds long, and if you want to continue to generate the full length of this 10 seconds, you can use the frame low cap and then keep doing the skip first frame number to just continue stacking on the next batch of video and continue so on until this reference video, all the frames are finished. That is basically how we can do more complex motions, character actions you can do with VASE, as we are not just limited to one when VASE encode conditions. For either you're just doing with the dev anything pre-processor or DW pose, or just limited to a mass masking with restyle that character from your image, that will be kind of the limit of how your creativities can do. So by having this, it is really nice that we have the VASE embed, and you can link it up with all the embed using the previous VASE embedded, so that we have three conditions here connecting together as one embed output for VASE and pass this to what we have in the WAN video sampler. While this way of playing with different conditioning for VASE, I haven't seen that in the native node can do. So I will be checking out if the ComfyUI native node VASE can do this or not, and we will try another video update later. But at this moment, the WAN videos wrapper is the most convenient way to play around with these conditions, and also the VASE are very flexibilities that we can set. The strength of this and how many start and end percentages for the conditions is just the same concept of what we usually have in the control net for stable diffusions. We use that as well for the anime diff like before, so it is really a similar concept. So once you adapt and understand this concept, you are good to go with all kinds of imaginations, how and what kind of things you want to do with it. I have received a question before. What is the difference between VASE and the WAN fun control? Now, the WAN fun control is that, well, you can combine two different control net preprocessors together. Like for example, I have my previous WAN 2.1 fun control. I do the same source videos in here. I load this up and then I have the control net preprocessors that has not been running yet in here. But then what you can do is that using the image blend to combine two control net preprocessors output into one image output as the control net result. In this way, you can use like this. For example, the same thing we used for the death anything V2 preprocessors and the DW pose. And basically that is almost the max that the WAN 2.1 fun control can handle more than one, like more than two conditions of this control net preprocessors you will get even more complex. And sometimes, or mostly, the fun control models cannot handle more complexities of that. And one more thing is that it cannot do the masking in the fun control by nature in the input native node in here. So what you can do is another way to use is that you first mass mask the regions manually by yourself, then you have to remove the character and paste that background back to whatever video you want to do. Those are more complexities and it's kind of trouble for people to use that. So why not just use a more convenient way to use a WAN 2.1 vase that is ready-made and set it up? The architecture of this framework is born to be used for this kind of complexities of video editing. That is a more efficient way to use. So the limitations of this, you are, for example, like this. You are only running with the control net processors. At the final, you test this you will know that it has the limitations of combining two or three control net preprocessors using the image blend, having problems of mix-ups in some action scenes. Something like that cannot be produced really well. Well, for some way, if you have just simple animations like a character is turning the head or just walking straight forward, very simple motions, yes, you can use this. But if you, let's say, you want to handle some extremely fast actions fighting scenes, or some arm crossing legs, those kinds of stuff, using the fun control, sometimes you will have problems seeing in that generated result. So I am going to try to generate some image pre-processing in here. As you can see, the obviously the result is not going to be good as the WAN 2.1 vase. If you want to compare with the generic result and how flexibility of that tool can do by having the fine control, you can use the character as the pre-processing and generate that for your output videos. But in general, you see the outcome of this. You can replicate how that movement is and transfer to the robotic character. But this is the reality. It is that you cannot handle so well in the fun control. So that's why I will say, 
choose whatever it is made of, and it is ready. You know, just the thing is being ready to do for what it is good at, and both are WAN 2.1 as well. So why not use a better one, a better control motions framework, to work on your video? So far, this is some little tips and some little tricks that I have been using. So that is it for this video, and I hope these tips are going to be helpful. And I am going to share this workflow. It is really easy to do. All you need is just, you know, keep duplicating this vase on code and, you know, copy to another group like here. I have a mass region. So let's say if I don't want to use a mass region, I can just delete here. I don't need this. And then come back to here. Let's say I want another control net preprocessor like here. I can do that as well. Maybe you have canny edge and something similar can be used for a simple way to have a control net preprocessor with the vase. And there you go. You can have different combinations in here. So yeah, this is one of the method of how that can be customized for your video. So that is it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video and have a nice day. See ya.